Simpson Paradox. With this video, you will be introduced with very simple statistical example which reveal when and why Simpson Paradox can happen. Imagine you are a doctor. One of your patients has a rare disease, D. Additionally, she or he was diagnosed with a high risk of developing a blood clot. You study the information on the two most popular drugs for D. Let's have the small table with the data. So, we have drug A and B. And we have a row indicating blood clot. This gives the information whether a blood clot was found in a patient or not. Yes mean the given number of patients has a blood clot. And no, the given number of patients doesn't have a blood clot. We can see that 27 patients who used drug A had a blood clot. And 95 patients who used drug A did not have a blood clot. There are 23 patients who used drug B and had a blood clot. And 99 patients who used drug B who did not have a blood clot. Both drugs have virtually identical effectiveness on disease D. 22% versus 78% for drug A and 19% versus 81% for drug B. We clearly can see that this table shows that drug B is better by 3% over drug A. This looks like a fair answer, but you feel skeptical. You know that blood clots can be very risky and you want to go deeper. You find more fine-grained data that takes the patient gender into the account. We will cover that just in a minute. Let's move this table and highlight the better drug based on what we have so far. We can see that the current view on the data shows that drugs B are better than drug A because it has a higher percentage of patients who do not have a blood clot. 81% on drug B versus 78% on drug A. If everything is clear so far, let's move forward. You find more fine-grained data that takes the patient gender into the account. First, check the impact caused by drug A. So, 24 female got blood clot and 56 did not get who used drug A. And 3 male got blood clot and 39 didn't get who used drug A. Let's double check the volume. 24 females plus 3 males equal to 27 in total who get a blood clot. And 39 males plus 56 females equal to 95 in total who did not get a blood clot. Additionally, to be sure that everything is fine, let's check the sums in total and gender-based rows. The sum of patients by total and by gender must be the same and it's equal to 122. Let's do the same checking for drug B. 17 female got blood clot and 25 didn't get who used drug B. Checking the volume, 17 females plus 6 males equal to 23 in total who get a blood clot and 25 females plus 74 males equal to 99 in total who didn't got a blood clot and used a drug B. 
and last checking by gender and total. The sum of patients by total and by gender must be the same and it's equal to 122 again. For drug A and for drug B, the number of patients is the same. So, we checked all this data, what is highlighted here with the blue rectangulars. So, we are sure the data is correct and valid for analysis. Next step, as we did in the beginning for total numbers, let's calculate percentage for both drugs by gender, female and male. Let's start with female. 24 female who got a blood clot dividing by the sum of all females is 30 persons. And 56 female who didn't got a blood clot dividing by the sum of all females is 70 persons. So here we have 30 versus 70 persons. For drug B, 17 female who got a blood clot dividing by the sum of all females is 40 persons. And 25 female who didn't get a blood clot dividing by the sum of all females is 60 persons. Here we have 40 versus 60 persons. Let's check for males now. For males, three males who got a blood clot dividing by the sum of all males is seven persons only. Then, 39 males who didn't get a blood clot dividing by the sum of all males is 93 persons. Here we have seven persons versus 93 persons. Next, for drug B, six males who got a blood clot dividing by all males is 7.5 persons. And 74 males who didn't got a blood clot dividing by all males is 92.5 persons. Here we have 7.5 persons versus 92.5 persons. Mathematically, everything looks fine, but something strange happened here. Let's come back to our initial calculation by total. Here, the numbers shows that drug B is preferable for all patients. The difference is 3 persons and drug B wins here. But it seems that drug A works better for females with 10% difference and males with 0.5 difference. We found a medical Schrodinger cat that flipped the effect of a drug when a patient gender is observed. We have just experienced a Simpson paradox, also known as Yule-Simpson effect. Simpson paradox appears when data partitioning significantly changed the outcome of the analysis. Okay, so how do I know which partitioning is the correct one? This is, will be on the next of my videos, so see you there. Bye bye.